G'day guys, Katan here from Ministry of Nodes and today we're taking a look at the Trezor One by Satoshi Labs. The Trezor One is the original hardware wallet. All competitors on the market stand on the shoulders of this giant. It was the first hardware wallet to come to market in 2014 and has since made a name for itself in the industry as a reliable and easy way to store your Bitcoins. It's fully open source, so if you have the skills, you're able to review the code and specifications of the device and even build your own. It's almost impossible to open this device without tearing the packaging to shreds. That's a feature, not a bug. So if you're trying to carefully open the box, you're in for a surprise. The box contains the following contents. The Trezor device itself, a micro USB cable, a lanyard, two recovery seed cards, a user manual, and four Trezor stickers. You'll be asked to install the Trezor bridge onto your computer when you first visit the website. Each time you access your wallet through Trezor's web interface, be sure to double check the website address and bookmark it as there are fake websites designed to look like the official Trezor website. It'll take you through the initial process of setting up your pin and providing you with your 24 word seed. Be sure to write this down on the card provided. Don't show it to anyone and keep it in a safe place. Don't make digital copies or take photos of it. The web interface is minimal, slick and user friendly. Be sure to follow the instructions carefully when upgrading the firmware of your device. Have your recovery seed words with you when you're upgrading, just in case something goes wrong. I'd recommend reading through the wiki documentation that Trezor have on their website. The more you read about the capabilities and shortfalls of your device, the more likely you'll be to make better responsible decisions with your money. So please take the time to read through the detailed documentation on Trezor's website. One of the more advanced features I'd recommend using is enabling a passphrase on your device. It allows you to open up completely different wallets within the same device. However, keep in mind, if you forget your passphrase or you're incapacitated, your funds cannot be recovered even with your seed recovery words. The funds are lost forever. Nobody can help you recover your funds if you lose your passphrase, so be very careful when using this feature. The biggest loss of funds is through users forgetting their passphrase, so it might be worthwhile writing it down. Your passphrase is case sensitive, so please be aware. You can use as many different passphrases as you like, and as such, the use of different passphrases can act as a decoy wallet. So if you're ever coerced into giving over your Bitcoins, you can send the attacker to the decoy side of your wallet, containing minimal funds, giving you plausible deniability. Now, unfortunately, the Trezor One has been reported to have a physical security vulnerability. An attacker is able to obtain your PIN and 24 seed recovery words in clear text, but only if they have physical access to your device. You can protect yourself from this through the use of a strong passphrase. If an attacker has your 24 seed words, they are able to brute force combinations of passphrases at their leisure. So Trezor recommends the use of a strong passphrase. A possible solution could be to keep your passphrase enable Trezor in a safe at home with a tamper evident seal. Whilst not perfect, it can give you an opportunity to move your funds to a more secure wallet should your device be physically compromised. Given the physical security vulnerability, I would think carefully before storing your Trezor One with a third party such as in a safety deposit box with a bank or a vault. I'll put a link in the description below with Trezor's official response to this vulnerability. For the more advanced users, you'll be pleased to find the Trezor One is compatible with Electrum software wallet. Electrum wallet supports BEC32, which enables the use of native SegWit addresses, that is, addresses starting with BC1 so you can take advantage of lower transaction fees. As of now, native SegWit addresses aren't supported within the Trezor web interface. For the privacy conscious users, if you're using Electrum Wallet in connection with your Electrum Personal Server, Electrum X or Electrum Rust Server, you can significantly improve your privacy without having to use Satoshi Lab servers to obtain your balance and transaction history, all whilst ensuring you're transacting on the correct blockchain with your consensus rule set. The Trezor One can also be used in Electrum Wallet as part of a multi-signature setup to sign one of the signatures required to spend. However, if you are a co-signer, given its physical security vulnerability, 
I would think carefully before taking this device abroad whilst traveling and how inconvenient it could be to lose access to your ability to co-sign transactions whilst away. If you're just starting out with Electrum, be sure to download the software from the official website at electrum.org. Be sure to download upgrades to the wallet from the official website as well. The Trezor One is also compatible with Wasabi Wallet. Keep in mind that Wasabi Wallet only supports native SegWit addresses, so you won't be able to see your existing funds if you're migrating over from Trezor's web interface. Wasabi Wallet features enhanced privacy for users without having to run a full node. If you're interested in purchasing a Trezor One, be sure to do so through official resellers. In Australia, this device will come in at around $140 delivered. It's a small price to pay for a fair bit of security and peace of mind. If you're ordering a hardware wallet from an online store, it might be worthwhile having it delivered to an address that you're not going to be keeping the device at. Use a work address, PO box, or a free Australia Post parcel locker. Keep a lookout for the security seals on the signs and make sure it hasn't been tampered with before you open it. From what I'm seeing, resellers of the Trezors are posting these devices quite quickly and stock is, much like your government issued currency, abundant in supply. All in all, the Trezor is a great place to start for beginners purchasing Bitcoin for the first time. You'll have a good experience with this wallet if you take the necessary precautions Trezor advises. It has room for more advanced features if you're willing to learn them. It's a reliable piece of hardware suitable for anyone looking to upgrade their Bitcoin security. This product is good for anyone looking to move their Bitcoins off their mobile phone hot wallet or the exchange or as part of a multi-signature setup. But don't take my word for it, do your own research. I hope you liked this review and if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel. If you're interested in learning more about Bitcoin, my co-founder Stefan and I are running in-person workshops to help you quickly advance up the Bitcoin learning curve. You can find out more on our website at ministryofnodes.com.au. You can also find us on Twitter at Ministry of Nodes. Be sure to listen to my co-founder's podcast, the Stefan Levera podcast. He interviews the best and the brightest minds focused on Bitcoin and Austrian economics. Be sure to check out his hardware wallet series to gain more insight into best practices. And that's it from me guys, I'll catch you in the next video.